and welcome to another exciting adventure through technology. I am Cassie Olson, Program Coordinator at Pelican Lake, Sandy Shores, and Lake Cochran Recreation Areas, as well as Hartford Beach State Park. If you tuned in on Monday, we discovered a whole bunch of different signs of spring at Lake Cochran Recreation Area and a woolly bear caterpillar that I found in my garage. We chatted about robins being a sign of spring as well, but we didn't dive too much into that one. That's because I was saving all of that excitement for today. The robins have migrated through as well as many other types of birds, but first we need to figure out what it means to migrate. Then we can talk about some of my favorite migratory birds. Do you know what migration is? Each year, a group of certain animals, like some birds that we'll talk about today, move from one place to another. Some may travel thousands of miles in the spring and then thousands of miles back in the fall. These long trips are called migrations. Animals migrate with the change of the weather and the seasons. In the fall, they'll migrate south to find warmer weather and better food supplies. And in the spring, they'll come back up here for a safe place to give birth. What do the animals that don't migrate do? Some of those animals hibernate or go into a deep sleep all winter. They do this to survive the cold, harsh winters when the food is scarce. What are some animals that you can think of that truly hibernate? Ground squirrels, bats, and woodchucks are just a few that truly hibernate. A woodchuck's heart rate goes from 80 beats per minute when it's active to four or five beats a minute when it hibernates. Its body temperature drops from 98 degrees Fahrenheit to 38 degrees Fahrenheit. And the woodchuck's incisors, like we talked about last week, the beaver, they have those sharp incisors in the front that grow continuously. They keep them short by gnawing on them, but in the winters, they quit growing due to hibernation. True hibernators do get up every few weeks to get a nibble of food, but can you think of any other hibernators? What about our cold-blooded critters like the turtles or the frogs and the snakes? Since cold-blooded animals can't control their body temperatures themselves, they need to find a way to protect themselves from the cold. Frogs and turtles bury themselves into the mud way below the frost line. They get oxygen from air trapped in the mud, and then in the spring when the sun warms up the mud, they'll come out. Some snakes head underground to hibernate and others grab, gather in sheltered places like rotted out logs. We actually saw a snake in our backyard yesterday. So I'm gonna say it, spring is here. Do you think that bears hibernate? Bears are actually not true hibernators. They are called light sleepers. They're easily awakened from their winter sleeps. These in-between hibernators are simply taking a long winter nap. Skunks, raccoons, and opossums are also a part of this group. These animals breathe a little bit more slow and they lower their body temperature just a few degrees while they're sleeping, but, I, but they wake up to forage between snows. Squirrels are also considered light sleep sleepers. You may know that they use their tail to help them balance on limbs and branches, but they also use their tail to wrap around them like a blanket to stay warm. Now let's get back to migration. Another animal that we've seen plenty of during the spring migration is the Canada geese. These geese fly south for the winter to avoid the, the winter freeze of lakes and ponds. Then they return to the north for spring and summer where they come to lay their eggs and build nests. Geese are known to fly in their V formation. This helps them save energy and allows them to fly up to 600 miles in one single day. We may also be seeing and hearing huge flocks of snow geese. They're passing through on their way further north. In an article from Ducks Unlimited, I learned about a radio collared right, white front that bred in northern Alaska and migrated all the way down to Louisiana. She traveled 1,732 miles in just 30 hours. Her top flight speed was 93 miles an hour. Eagles also follow that snow goose migration and they'll pick off the sick, wounded, or weak geese. Eagles congregating is always such a cool thing to see, so make sure to grab a pair of binoculars and go see what you can find. My friend Brenna was out watching the eagles hang around and she took a few of these pictures. Notice in this picture that the eagles have brown heads, where in the last picture they had white heads. Do you know why this is? The ones with white heads are adults, so they're at least three years old. The ones with brown heads in this picture are juveniles. It takes three years for an eagle's head to turn white, so those are younger than three. Migrating eagles fly during the day at speeds averaging 30 miles an hour and they tend to migrate in groups. A stream of migrating bald eagles can be 20 to 30 miles long. 
with birds spread out for up to a half of a mile. So right now, the eagles are migrating back up north towards their breeding grounds, then the babies will be born. In just six to eight weeks after those babies are born, the young eagles leave their nesting area and head out on their first migration. The adults do not migrate with the juveniles. The newly fledged eagles will go off on their own and the older ones are gonna follow behind soon. Aside from birds we talked about before, we'll also see sandtail cranes, swans, egrets, blue heron, white front ibis, each of the 12 species of owls we talked about the other day, and we may even see a few sea ducks. The bufflehead is a pretty com common diver duck that we see around here, and they are considered a sea duck. I've just started to see some of those cooler colored ducks come through. In fact, today I saw anything other than a mallard. On my little cruise this morning, I did see a bufflehead, and then I saw a pair of wood ducks sitting on a wetland. These are mallards. Can you tell which one is the drake and which is the hen? The one with the green head is the drake, and the brown one is the hen. Most waterfowl fly at speeds of 40 to 60 miles an hour. With a 50 mile per hour tailwind, migrating mallards could travel 800 miles during an eight hour flight. These are duck energetics. I showed that a mallard would have to feed and rest anywhere from three to seven days to replenish the energy used during this eight hour journey. Have you guys been seeing any ducks around your area? What have you seen? Send us pictures of the waterfall in your area. We would love to see them. We're gonna to begin to see some really beautiful birds passing through here soon. The males have something called breeding plumage, which means that their colors are so bright. This is to attract a mate, but it's so cool for us to see those bright colored birds right now. The females have a little bit more of a dark, bland, drab color, and that's so they can protect their eggs so they're more camouflaged. We are in the heart of the prairie pothole region, so we see a fair amount of ducks nest around here. We mostly see blue winged teal, gadwall, mallards, a few pintails, and a couple of bonus species here and there. These ducks are all ground nesters, meaning that they will build their nest on the ground. They love to use those native prairie grasses that we le learned last Thursday. However, there is one more species of duck that nests around here. Do you know what type of duck I'm thinking of? Did you guess a wood duck? Because if you did, you were correct. This is a drake wood duck. He has a red circle around his eye. That is one good way. And he also has this tuft on the top of his head. Two good ways to identify the drake wood duck. The females, the hens, are gonna have a white circle around her eye and that's gonna be your best way to identify her. The wood duck is unique because it's a cavity nester, meaning that it finds a hole in a tree or a man-made nesting box like many of you have probably helped me build. This one is very nicely decorated by the students at Big Stone City School. And they go nest really high up into the trees. They can be up to a mile away from water and they can be nearly 60 feet above ground into that tree. The whole brood of around 11 freshly hatched ducklings will leave the nest within 24 hours of the first egg hatching. They climb up with their really sharp claws. You can see them on my mount here. You see his sharp claws. They climb up through the inside of the wood duck box or their cavity and they're gonna jump out. They can fall up to 60 feet without getting hurt because their little chests activate when they start falling into something kind of like a little bouncy ball. So nobody's gonna get hurt. Wood ducks are such fascinating birds and lucky for us, we can see them right around here. Here's my final fun fact for the day. The Arctic Tern holds the world record for the most miles traveled for migration that has ever been recorded. A radio collared tern clocked a whopping 59,000 650 miles over the course of its yearly migration, from its breeding area on an island off the coast of England all the way to Antarctica and then back again. That is the equivalent of flying around the circumference of the earth twice plus an additional 10,000 miles. That is one busy little bird. Turns are fun birds to watch dive into the water and search for food. We only scratch the surface on migrating birds. There are so many cool facts about how animals in South Dakota survive and manage those changing seasons. Today's challenge is for you and your family to go on a ride or a walk to see how many migrating birds you can find. I really want to see if you can find any duck species, so try to find some open water or some wetlands to see if anything's moving through. Snap a few pictures and send them our way. Make sure to pay close attention to their bright colors and different patterns. Thanks for hanging out with us. I will see you Friday for another exciting e-program that takes place at Pelican Lake Recreation Area. Bye!